Hi everyone, my name is Amber, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a ranking of the Becky Chambers Wayfarers series. I've done quite a few of these videos in the past, a lot of them are unfortunately privatised now because I don't want people watching them because they are so old, they're <laughs> from maybe five, six, seven years ago. And yeah, I didn't really like my old videos, so they're all private now. So I did want to do another one because I really enjoy doing these videos, actually. I love lists and I love ranking videos. So I'm going to be telling you, let me just get another book, hang on. I'm going to be telling you which Becky Chambers book I like the most, which one I like the least, if that's even possible, and which order of preference they are in for me. I've got another book here standing in for the galaxy and the ground within because I don't own a paperback of that yet, that's coming next year, but I couldn't wait to do this video because I really want to talk about them. So Becky Chambers has written four Wayfarers books and unfortunately the series is now over and I love every single one of them. I've given them all five stars, I adore them. The first one is The Long Way to a Small angry planet and this one follows a woman called Rosemary who joins the crew of the Wayfarer which is a tunneling ship in space so this ship has to punch holes in space to create kind of like wormhole tunnels so that people can like fast travel through space using these tunnels and Rosemary has kind of a secret in her past it follows her as she gets to know the crew and realizes that maybe her past or her family don't really mean that she's also an awful person. That's as much as I'm going to say about that because it's quite a struggle to talk about this plot without giving too much away but I adore this book so like I said I gave it five stars. I first read it in maybe 2017 because my friend would not stop recommending it and I can see why. Obviously this book is a space opera. It's one of the coziest, most heartwarming, hopeful, inspiring space opera books I have ever read. One of the most heartwarming books I've ever read full stop, let alone a space opera. And I'm just so glad that I gave it a go because I wasn't sure it was going to be my kind of thing because I had heard that there's very little plot and I do disagree with that. I think there is a strong plot throughout and there's very much an explosive ending, but the book is definitely mostly character based and I loved getting to know all of the crew of the Wayfarer. We get introduced to all of them. We get to know all of their backstories, all of their struggles, everything they're going through. And I think Becky Chambers balances each of the characters really well. I do think that this one feels a little bit choppy at times, as though it could be possibly a bunch of short stories all kind of merged together into one book. And normally that would frustrate me, but because this is about the characters rather than the plot, at least for the most part, I don't actually mind. So there's this one. Like I said, gave it five stars. I adore it. The next one in the series is a companion book, but I would recommend reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet before picking this one up, and that is A Closed and Common Orbit. This one follows Pepper and another character from the first book, and it alternates between flashbacks to when a girl called Jane is growing up on a scavenger planet, I guess you could say, and also present day when Sidra is on a planet now and is kind of getting used to their life there. And I'm being really careful because I don't want to give away the ending to The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. So yeah, it's difficult for me to talk about this one. But I remember when I first read these two books in very quick succession that I liked A Closed and Common Orbit more than The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Just because the plot felt more structured, I felt a lot of sympathy for both Jane and Sidra. And it made me very emotional. But now, having reread both of the books again in quick succession, I actually think I might prefer The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but only just. And that's basically because I love the entire cast of characters in that book. Whereas in this one, we're only really following two characters. In that one, we're following many, many more. I've now grown quite attached to those characters having reread that book. So even though I did give A Closed and Common Orbit five stars as well, and it's absolutely one of my favorite books, I think The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet edges out just a little bit more, perhaps. I'm going to have to think about this some more while I sit here and talk about the other books. Okay, and then the third book in the Wayfarer series is another standalone companion book, but I do think you should read these books in order. Like I said, I'm going to tell you this about the fourth book as well. But the third one is called Record of a Spaceborn View and so before I read the fourth book, this one was my favourite in the series, hands down. This one follows the Exodus fleet, which are the humans that left Earth on a spaceship made of metal that they salvaged from buildings in like cities that were failing on Earth because Earth was becoming uninhabitable. So they fled, they spent hundreds and hundreds of years on this spaceship where everyone just had to be lovely to one another because there was no kind of emigrating, there was no fleeing or escaping the spaceship. Everyone had to help each other out because that's all they could do. Because of this, humanity was forced to get along and then eventually aliens come along or sh I should say sapiens sapiens come along and show the humans that they're not the only ones in the universe humans having recently joined this kind of galactic commons are now kind of at the bottom of the food chain because they haven't really got much to offer they aren't really all that powerful they're just a bunch of people who have been on a spaceship for hundreds of years and they don't yeah 
there's not really much going for them but i just loved reading about them this follows i think four or five characters some of them are human some of them are sapiens visiting from other places yeah i just i loved reading about how far humanity had come both like physically mentally and emotionally and i loved reading about all the characters and just the kind of hopefulness of the entire thing i quite enjoyed reading about how humanity had kind of been knocked down a peg or two and like everything else had been stripped away so that now they had to get along this way and also it made me cry a lot both times i've read it so yeah up until the fourth book this one was definitely up there like my favorite because i adore it so, so much and then we have galaxy and the ground within which i'm gonna put the cover up for like i said i've ordered the paper that but it's not coming out for ages so this is the fourth book and for me this is the most kind of standalone for me this is the most kind of standalone book in the entire series because it doesn't really follow any characters that we've met before bar one and that is Pei, who i did really enjoy but i was expecting to enjoy her character a lot more than i did for some reason i don't really know why that is but i actually liked the other characters who were just introduced in this book a lot more as always this one is very very heartwarming and just lovely to read again there is a plot but the focus of the book as with the rest of the series is the characters and the relationships between them and how they all interact and i just really appreciate how much time becky chambers spends focusing on such a thing because not all authors do especially in sci-fi this is probably the kind of thing that you'd expect from literary fiction i think where it's a bit slower and a lot more character based but sci-fi tends to be like all guns and action aliens and stuff but that's not what this is not that there aren't a lot of aliens sapiens but this is definitely a lot more character based and while the ending does get kind of again explosive and dramatic there are definitely some dramatic moments in there and it's very fast paced the book is still focusing on interactions and relationships and how different sapiens are treated and i really appreciated that becky chambers also brought in some sapiens that we had met or heard of in previous books of the series but hadn't been the focus before i'm not going to try to pronounce these species names but there are ones that were mentioned perhaps briefly in previous books that are now kind of taking the top prime spot in this one and i really appreciate it as well having read all three books so quickly one after another that these species were then mentioned in this book because everything just sort of came together and also previous things in the other books just made a lot more sense such as for example the pirates in book one which i didn't actually click were related until i was doing a live stream with the space sirens book club so that was fun i just really love this book i love the entire series which is why i'm doing this video but this book was also really really good so now i want to talk about my ranking of these books and i have probably spoiled what the ranking is going to be in the end having spoken about these books just now but my issue currently is i don't really know where to put the galaxy and the ground within i think my issue with this one is that i've only read it once whereas i've read the other three twice now i'm a lot more familiar with the other three even though i read this one most recently so i'm going to try to put it in some sort of order i'll be right back okay so like i said i've probably already spoiled this for you but we're gonna get into it we're going to start with my least favorite of the wayfarers books which i do need to say it's not that i don't like the book at all i still gave it five stars it's just not ranked way up there with my favorite book so the first or fourth yeah so the fourth book at the bottom of my wayfarers pile is the galaxy and the ground within just because i've only read it once i think i need another read of it to become more familiar with the characters and to really appreciate it a lot more and i'm probably going to have to do a full reread of the entire series before i get back to this one then taking spot number three is actually a bit of a twist because i wasn't expecting this when i first went into rereading this entire series and that is a closed and common orbit this one is like i said faster paced than and the long way to a small airy planet and i love the characters i adore reading about jane and also al as well if you've read the book you'll know who al is reading about their relationship was just lovely but i think having a smaller cast of characters for me to enjoy is the reason that this one isn't higher up on the list just because there were more characters in the other one you know and then number two almost taking the top spot but not quite is the long way to a small airy planet the first book in the series and the one that made me fall in love with becky chambers books this one is amazing it's heartfelt i adore all of the characters and i can't wait to reread this one again because i love it so so much and then this isn't really like a drum roll moment but let's do one taking the top spot is the record of a space born few i think i really connect with this one because it's about the humans and their journey through space and also humans who have left the exodus ship to go down to a planet and then who have tried to come home and it makes me so emotional i sobbed while reading this both times it's honestly heartbreaking but also heartwarming and heartfelt and lovely it's my favorite book by becky chambers and it's also one of my favorite if not my favorite sci-fi book 
ever because it's just incredible and I would highly recommend reading this series in order like I said if you wanted to start somewhere else you can start with this one it's amazing and I love it so so much. So that's my ranking for all of the books in Becky Chambers Wayfarer's series. I'm really sad this series is over. I'm kind of glad that she didn't just drag it out. I'm still kind of campaigning with the publisher for a encyclopedia set in this world and with all of the information about all of the sapience and the history and the goings on. <laughs> no one else knows about this idea, like I doubt the publisher is paying any attention to me. Becky Chambers definitely doesn't know, but if she did ever release something like that about these books I would pre-order it in a heartbeat because I think it would be incredible. I would love to read more about these characters and the species and the world and just everything that was going on. It's just so well thought out and well built and she's clearly put her heart and soul into this series. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll be back soon with another one. Let me know if you'd like me to rank any more series or books by other authors. I would really enjoy doing that. Previously I've done the uh, Harry Potter books which I will not be revisiting and I've also done Gillian Flynn and A Song of Ice and Fire but I don't don't believe those videos are still public so I could redo them if you wanted me to if you want me to rank the Song of Ice and Fire books then I can try doing that even though I haven't read them in years but I could also do some newer releases or you know some classics or something if you want me to just let me know in the comments below let me know which book is your favorite in the Wayfarer series or which one you think will be your most favorite based on my descriptions of them I would love to know and then we can maybe compare and see how our ranking matches up I think that would be quite fun thank you so much for watching this video I'll speak to you in the next one